After the devastation of the Permian, life hit the reset button once again. On land, the few tetrapods that survived, descendants of the first land-going vertebrates, would evolve into reptiles, dinosaurs, and mammals. Millions of years later, by the start of the Triassic, the branches of the Tree of Life are once again blossoming. The Triassic is a time of tremendous innovation because the decks have been cleared so severely in the Permian Triassic. So you, you basically wipe the slate, not clean, but pretty clean. <laughs> the Triassic is this really crazy place where these things now radiate again into this, all these different kinds of shapes and forms. Lots of really cool, weird animals in the Triassic. In the ocean, marine reptiles had emerged, like the ichthyosaurs, which roamed the seas hunting fish and squid. Corals bloomed and built reefs once again. Ammonites proliferated, along with sea urchins and starfish. In the skies above, the first flying reptiles, called pterosaurs, beat their huge wings. On land, great herbivores with tough leathery armor grazed in conifer forests. Their defensive carapace hints at the presence of fearsome predators, like the agile coelophysis, which probably hunted in packs. The two-legged 40-pound coelophysis was one of the first dinosaurs to grace the Earth. It would take tens of millions of years and another global catastrophe before giant dinosaurs completely dominated the world. Some 200 million years ago, Europe and Africa tore away from the American continent, forming the Atlantic Ocean. The Earth entered a new period of volcanic upheaval. It set in motion the fourth mass extinction in the planet's history, wiping out three quarters of land-dwelling species 96% of ocean species. The great Permian experiment lay in ruins. But once again, life would rise like a phoenix from the ashes. The dinosaurs survive. The mammals survive. The pterosaurs survive. So on land, you have these lineages now that are off and racing. In the highlands of central South Africa, the rocks preserve a record of this renaissance. 
and a world dominated by some of the most massive animals that ever existed. The mega dinosaurs. Paleontologist Jonas Schwarznier and his students from Witwatersrand University in Johannesburg are excavating fossils from the Triassic and Jurassic periods that may shed light on this revolutionary transition. While his students extract a fossil from the Triassic, Jonah goes in search of sediments from the Jurassic. These rocks in this cliff, these are Jurassic, so they're about 200 million years old. Down below us in the Triassic, all types of animals are, are found in the rocks. But as we come up into the Jurassic, dinosaurs become much more common. In fact, almost everything we find here is a dinosaur. Immediately after the extinction event, dinosaurs are small, but just for a short time. Suddenly, they explode into enormous body sizes. And in fact, within a few million years, you have things that are twice the size of today's elephants. In the Triassic, it's anyone's game. But as soon as we get into the Jurassic, it's clear that dinosaurs are the winners of the day. Okay, slowly, gently. One, two, three. Guys, okay? Hey, guys. Hey, Hi. just in time. Oh, you flipped it. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, we've taken bigger ones down before. Okay, are you ready? On yep. three, two, three. Most of the fossils collected in South Africa in the past century are housed at Wiswaterstrand University in Johannesburg. The wealth of this collection underlines the sheer variety of species during the Jurassic. The fossils on these shelves are the bones of Ledumahare Mafube, a giant dinosaur from South Africa, which lived in the Jurassic period about 200 million years ago. And this is the foot bone of Ledumahare Mafube. This is the only known specimen of Ledumahare, and we've been looking in South Africa for well over 150 years for dinosaurs. The name Ledumahare means a giant thunderclap, and Mafube, which is the species name, means dawn. So together, it's a Sasutu term, meaning a giant thunderclap at dawn. We can tell from these bones that this animal weighed about 12 tons. And that's amazing because it shows that dinosaurs soon after the end Triassic extinction were able to rebound and attain enormous sizes. We can tell from the bones of the Dumahadi that it must have walked on all four legs. In fact, much like a modern elephant, but with a slightly more crouched limb posture. This type of dinosaur is a sauropodomorph, and we know that they had long necks and tiny heads and giant bodies where they would have fermented the food they swallowed whole. Dinosaurs like Ledumahari would have made tremendous advantage of the openings in the environment and the ecosystems left vacant by the end Triassic extinction. After life was almost wiped out in the Permian, fascinating new creatures emerged on the stage. With the arrival of flowering plants and pollinating insects, evolution went into overdrive. The development of new species sparked the genesis of others. Herbivores grew larger and more diversified, along with the carnivores that fed on them.
These gigantic sauropods were the biggest land animals that have ever lived. Some of them as much as 100 feet long, 20 feet tall, up to 88 tons. These massive, incredible animals. During the Cretaceous, evolution went to extremes. The jaw of the T-Rex exerted so much force, it could crush the bones of its prey and swallow them whole. The largest flying creatures the Earth has ever seen ruled the skies, pterosaurs, whose wingspan could reach 12 meters. And in the oceans, creatures also grew immense, like Plesiosaurus, a ferocious predator. And then there was the Mosasaur, a reptile that grew up to 18 meters. The dinosaurs dominated the face of the Earth for more than 175 million years, covering two geological periods, the Jurassic, then the Cretaceous. Today, their only descendants are birds. Once again, a cataclysm shook the planet and brought the giants low. 